the state of California is suing Uber and Lyft. Uh, this is because of a bill, uh, a, a new piece of policy called AB5, and we're going to dive into this. This has been a uh, controversial piece of legislation for a number of reasons, um, and there are some good factors here and some concerning factors here, and we're going to dive into it. First, let's dive into the lawsuit. So check this out. Oh, let me scroll up to the headline. California sues Uber and Lyft claiming workers are misclassified. The ride-hailing companies are accused of de defying a new state law that says gig workers should be treated as employees. So uh, here's from the New York Times article. California's attorney general and a coalition of city attorneys in the state sued Uber and Lyft on Tuesday, claiming the companies wrongfully classified their drivers as independent contractors in violation of a state law that makes them employees. The law, known as Assembly Bill 5, AB 5, requires companies to treat their workers as employees instead of contractors if they control how workers perform their task or if the work is a routine part of a company's business. At least 1 million gig workers in the state are affected by the law, which is supposed to give them a path to benefits like a minimum wage, unemployment insurance. Uh, this has traditionally been withheld from independent contractors. Although AB5 took effect on January 1st, Uber, Lyft, and other gig company, gig economy companies that operate in California have resisted and are not taking steps to reclassify their drivers. Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash have poured $90 million in a campaign for a ballot initiative that would exempt them from complying with the new law. Uber has argued that its core business is technology, not rides, and therefore drivers are not a key part of its business. <laughs> wow. That's some good. Oh no, drivers. Technology is what we is what we do. That's really what we do. That that's that's. Imagine 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 logging into your Lyft and Uber app and or Uber app, and uh, you need a ride somewhere and you need to get somewhere, and you go, oh look, I just booked a ride. Look at how quick that was. Is the ride coming? Nope, the ride's never going to come. But really, this app's all about the technology. I got I got to book a ride. And now I can go for a ride in my head. I can imagine being at my hotel room or wherever it is that you were going to go. Because according to, to Lyft and Uber, driving people <laughs> isn't the core of their business. The technology is the core of their business. So I guess without the drivers, they would operate just fine. Because it's about the technology, according to them. Wow. That is a remarkable me mental gymnastics. Quite impressive. Quite impressive. All right. So the lawsuit uh, also claims the ride hailing companies are engaging in unfair business practices that harms other California companies that follow the law. By avoiding payroll taxes and not paying a minimum wage, Uber and Lyft are able to provide rides at an artificially low cost, the suit claims, giving them a competitive advantage over other businesses. The suit seeks civil penalties and back wages for workers that could add up to hundreds of millions of dollars. California has ground rules with rights and protections for workers and their employees. We intend to make sure that Uber or Lyft play by the rules, says Xavier Becerra, California's attorney general. The city attorneys of San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego joined in the lawsuit. California's move is a significant threat to gig companies and could influence other states with similar laws to take action against them, labor experts said. So here's what's going on here. Uh, AB5 basically is a, a, a law that says you need to classify a lot of contract workers as employees. Now, in many ways, this is a good thing. In the case of Uber and Lyft, this is a good thing because it gives better protections to their workers. It gives better wages to their workers. And they're still gonna, you're still gonna be able to get a ride. It's just the workers are gonna be treated better. They're gonna be they're gonna get a decent hourly wage. They're gonna get decent benefits. And you know what? It's not going to cause prices to go crazy. That's the argument that, that people always use. Like, well, now prices are going to be out of control. Look, Uber and Lyft are still going to want to be competitive with taxi companies. They're still going to want to offer something more convenient and cheaper. They're still going to want to do that. So they'll cut corners elsewhere so that a customer's ride isn't through the roof. They're not going to have their prices go through the roof and then no one uses their service anymore. They're not going to do that. You know, it, it's just like anything else. Well, what happens if my Big Mac's $20? That's not going to happen because no one will buy it. They'll do something else. 
So it's the same thing here. And where could they cut corners, you ask? Well, gee, there's a lot of Uber drivers that have to sleep in their cars well, their CEO just bought a $172 million house. So I have a couple ideas. I have a couple ideas. So that's what AB5 does. Now, there are some concerns around AB5, and the concerns are because there are different types of uh, different types of jobs and designations and uh, positions where an employee designation um is completely unnecessary. Something like a, a freelancer, or in my case, a comedian, or a musician, uh, something like that. It wouldn't make sense for a musician who's playing at a venue uh, to be designated as an employee. That doesn't make sense for anyone involved. Um, same with a, a freelance writer who maybe contributes to a bunch of different places. Now, the AB5 legislation does have some carve outs. In other words, there are some employee or excuse me, some workers shouldn't say employees because they're not employees, some workers where this does not apply to them because it doesn't make any sense for anyone involved for it to apply to them. All right. So here, here's a couple things going on around this. So this is from the Hollywood reporter. We'll go here first. Musician groups and California legislators propose gig economy law amendment. So the legislation would exempt the majority of musicians seeking to collaborate in the recording studio from having to enter into employee, employer employee relationships. Top musicians groups and two California legislators have unveiled a proposed amendment to the controversial gig economy law AB5 to ease its impact on music professionals. The amendment was retrograde to compliment, or excuse me, a compromise between AB5 author Assemblyman Lorena Gonzalez, Majority Leader Ann Calderon, and several musicians' rights groups, including the Recording Academy and the American Federation of Musicians, exempts the majority of musicians, vocalists, recording artists, composers, blah, 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 to AB5 strict ABC test to determine their worker classification in a recording studio. Now, and it looks like this is going to be successful because here's a headline from a law website. Music industry receives relief from AB5. So music industry receives relief from AB5. So here's the controversial ABC test that they're concerned about. Now, another, uh, another concern, before we go to the bill itself, another concern going on in regards to this bill Big economy law author proposes legislation easing impact on freelancers. So there's another amendment that is going to end the quote controversial 35 submission cap. So what this is, there's a portion of the bill that says freelancers like freelance writers and photographers are exempt from this law unless they have 35 submissions per year or more for one publication or one outlet, then that uh, outlet needs to designate them the empl an employee. So, and the logic behind that is, gee, think about it. There's 52 weeks in a year. 35 submissions is a lot of submissions. If somebody is submitting that much, you know, one could argue they are essential to the company and should be designated as an employee. However, what, I, what this amendment's hitting at is that, well, gee, it's not that simple. What about someone who is, um, you know, this is just an example off the top of my head. What about someone who's syndicated? What about a freelancer who maybe, you know, maybe they write these certain pieces or articles and they appear in a bunch of different outlets all the time, um, you know, and they make their living accordingly and they want it that way, you know, and it, it, with 35 plate or however many outlets publish them, would they all have to designate that person an employee? How would that work? That doesn't seem feasible or even possible. And it doesn't seem like that'd be a winning scenario for anyone involved in this, for instance. So that's why they're saying we need to ease up on that because it's not always applicable. So here's the bill itself. And here is um, the thing that everybody is concerned about in the freelance world where freelancing is appropriate is the ABC test. So let's scroll down for that specifically. We're not going to go through the entire bill. But there's a basic, okay, so here is essentially the ABC test. I know it's kind of, all right. So the ABC test that everybody is uh, a little bit concerned about, and some people are actually freaking out about, okay, here it is. A person is free. So this is where you can still stay 
as an independent contractor. The person is free from the control and direction of the hiring entity in connection with the performance of the work, both under the contract for the performance of the work and in fact. Okay. The person performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. That's the one people are concerned about. All right. C. The person is customarily engaged in an independently established trade occupation or business of the same nature as that involved in the work performed. Okay. Now they have all these, you know, different entities and different types of um, uh, professions that are exempt from this as well. But here's the thing that a lot of creative professionals are um, taking concern with in this ABC test. The big part is B. The person performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. So let's use me, for example, as a comedian, just, just for ease of example's sake in uh, what AB5 is all about. Okay, so number number A. Well, number A. Wow, I just said that. Okay, A, which is number one. <laughs> number A. A is a number now because I said so. All right. The person is free from the control and direction of the hiring entity in connection with the performance of the work both under the contract for the performance of the work and in fact. Okay, so when I go do comedy at a comedy club, no comedy club is telling me what to say or how to say it. I do my act that I do uh, in any other venue. Um, the only control and, and direction is that, you know, the show starts at a certain time. Uh, and that's something that we all agree on. So A, as a comedian at a comedy club, I meet that. I meet A. All right. B. The person performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. Ooh, now it gets a little complicated, doesn't it? Because, gee, comedy club, comedy club, comedy is in the name. So somebody doing comedy, one would assume that person is um, uh, not outside of the usual course of the hiring entity's business. You're a comedy club. Yeah, that's a comedian. Yeah. Okay, sounds like that doesn't meet uh, the requirement in B. All right. So C, the person is customarily engaged in an independently established trade occupation or business of the same nature as that involved in the work performed. A comedian performs at clubs all over the country. So yeah. So meeting A and C in, in my case as a comedian or anyone's case as, as a touring comedian, and, and you can just substitute comedian for musician, same thing. A and C are very easily met. B is where the waters get a little muddy. The person performs work that is outside the usual course of a hiring entity's business. Well, gee, if you're a music venue, music is kind of the usual course of the business, right? Comedy is the usual course of the entity's business, right? But here's the thing. Here's where I think, first of all, there's a number of ways that we could solve this. One is already happening, just a, a carve out for musicians. And that amendment's already there, a carve out for musicians. That's already happening and, and it'll be extended to, um, and I'm sure there's gonna be something in there for other types of performing artists. So that'll cover comedians, that'll cover actors and whatever else where it is appropriate. So that's one thing, just a straight up amendment. The other thing is the argument could be made that, you know, the business is still food and beverage. There are times where a comedy club is open and there is no comedy happening on the stage. So where they're just serving drinks, so they're getting ready to open and they're just serving drinks and food. And, you know, most establishments, they don't stay open if uh, they don't serve food and drink. That's how they keep the lights on, the food and beverages. That's the case in a lot of comedy venues, a lot of music venues. Well, Ron, what about a, for instance, where an artist rents a venue where it's just a black box theater where people just bring in their own food and drinks and they just rent? Well, then you're not in the business of um, you're not in the business of having those artists there. You're in the business of providing a facility. That's what you're in the business of. If people didn't rent out your theater, nothing would ever happen there. So. A lot of people are freaking out about AB5, and I don't see what all the commotion is really about. I think the carve-outs are very apparent, and I don't think that California is going to screw over show business. <laughs> I think California realizes show business, not something we want to screw over. So what, some of the biggest musicians union presence in, in the country and probably in the world, I don't know that for sure, 
but I'd imagine possibly in the world too, is in Los Angeles. I don't think <laughs> they're going to want to screw over musicians or comedians. They know that show business happens here. They're not going to want to screw that over. So I don't think that freelancers really have something to worry about. There's just going to be, they're just going to have to iron out the details and make sure the fine print is apparent. Who does have something to worry about with this are places like Lyft and Uber. Because how are you going to make the claim that providing rides isn't the usual course of your hiring entity's business? Well, we know how they're doing it. They're saying that technology is their business. That's their claim. They're claiming, no, it's because of the, te the technology is the main entity of our business. It's the fact that you can call it up on an app instead of calling it a taxi company. Oh, really? So, so, if P so getting the ride doesn't matter? The, the, if the ride doesn't happen, that's just no big deal. People log on to Lyft and Uber, not because they uh, need to get somewhere, but because they think, what a cool app. What a cool, is there a free game I can play on this? So that's who it's going to hit. And what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to treat their workers a lot better. Because guess what? Those workers generated the wealth for them at the top. And, you know, I don't think that, I, I think this legislation, assuming it is unrolled properly, will do a lot more good than any, I think any harm will be, will be ironed out. I, I really do. But the good it'll bring is going to be pretty significant. Now, I, I know you're thinking, well, what about people who, you know, they just drive Uber and Lyft on the side a little bit to supplement their income? Well, there's a number of things that'll probably happen there. First of all, there'll be part-time employee designations. Just like there's full-time, there's going to be part-time too. So, you know, if somebody falls into that category, they still want to drive part-time, there will be part-time opportunities. Second of all, just because someone's designated as an employee doesn't mean that they don't have any flexibility in their lives anymore. There's tons of flexible work environments in our day and age. So it's very plausible that someone could be designated an employee, still make their own schedule. They'll just have a certain hours they have to drive every week. That'll probably be what happens. If you're part-time, you have to drive X amount of hours. If you're full-time, you have to drive X amount of hours. And then you get a decent wage and you get health care and you get paid time off and you get treated better while still enjoying the flexibility you had prior. Because most of the people, every driver I've ever met that drives Lyft or Uber full-time, they drive a lot. They drive a lot. And some of them make better livings than others because there is, you know, and I've I've never done it, so I don't really know much about it. But I know there are there are ways where you can really maximize what you pull in each hour. And there's how to videos on YouTube about it. I've never watched any of them. I don't know how it works, but um, but I know like there are ways where some people make a lot, and other people, uh, you know, don't make so much. But you know, so so that's what's going on with this piece of legislation. And that's what's going on with the lawsuit with California. Um, and yeah, I think it's a good thing that Lyft and Uber are going to have to treat their workers with decency and that they're going to have to give them living wages and that they're going to have to give them uh, a decent work environment and benefits and pay time off because they generate all the wealth for that company. They should be designated as employees and they do meet option B, the person who performs that work uh, you know, or excuse me, they don't meet option B. They don't. The person performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. If you are a transportation app, the transportation is the usual course of the hiring entity's business, pun intended. So there you go. That's what's going on there. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news.